Hey everyone, I am really excited to say that I finally qualify for PhD candidacy in the astronomy department at NMSU. I've been at NMSU for about four years now and the road to PhD candidacy was paved with many, many steps. So I figured I'd give you guys some insight into what those steps were and the things I've had to do to reach this point. All the way from taking classes my first two years to proposing my thesis project this past November. So obviously the first thing that students will need to do in their program is complete their coursework which is just the classes that you're required to take by your department. Um, these could be in-department classes or out-of-department classes or research credit classes. At NMSU, in the astronomy department, we're required to take a total of 27 credit hours of in-department courses, which usually equates to about nine um, in-department graduate classes. This doesn't include the required out-of-department credit hours or the required research credit hours that we need to take during those first two years as well. I could talk about the courses I've taken at NMSU in a whole other video, and I probably will at some point, so this is probably all I'm going to say at this point about the classes that I've taken. In terms of exams that are required to achieve PhD candidacy, the astronomy program in NMSU works slightly different than many of the other physics and astronomy programs across the nation. So in my department, there are four different types of exams that students must pass in order to achieve PhD candidacy. These include the cumulative exams, which are a collection of smaller exams, the qualifying exam, the oral exams, which are split into a coursework oral and a thesis proposal oral, and then finally the written thesis proposal. To briefly explain what each of these exams are, the cumulative exams are timed exams that typically gauge a student's ability to quickly and efficiently extract information from a scientific paper. So the way these exams work is that a student is given roughly 30 minutes to read a scientific paper, and then after that roughly two hours um, to answer a set of questions pertaining to that paper. So starting from their second semester, they have two years until their fifth semester to try and pass five cumes and they get a total of 18 chances. So this doesn't sound like it would be that difficult or like a lot to do um, because five isn't even half of the number of administered exams. But the thing that makes the cumulative exams particularly difficult is that they're nearly impossible to study for. This is because each faculty member in the department gets to administer an exam, one exam throughout the year um, on a topic of their choice. Typically it's a topic in their field of study so I've seen cumulative, cumulative exams on a range of topics from things that I'm familiar with, like galaxies, um, to topics that I'm a little bit less comfortable with, like the sun or exoplanets. One time we straight up had a cumulative exam that didn't even have a paper. It was just a set of math questions that the professor thought that we should be able to um, answer. But for the most part, many faculty will try and stick to this idea of picking out a paper and writing a set of questions pertaining to that paper. So the thing that makes these types of exams difficult to study for is that the order in which the faculty give their exams is randomized and kept secret from the students. So we basically don't know who's giving the exam until we walk in and sit down to take the exam. And then the professor will walk in and we'll all throw our hands up and be like, oh, we should have known it was so-and-so. So this makes it so that you're only ever really able to brush up on general topics in astronomy, but not on the specific topics that were covered in that professor's class. Oh yeah, and by the way, these exams are exclusively given on Saturday mornings at like 10 a.m., um, which was never fun to, to have to wake up on a Saturday morning and be on campus. So I know this randomized secret method of administering exams seems really um, frustrating and stressful, but I think it really emphasizes the purpose of these exams, which was to be able to pick up a scientific paper, regardless of the field, and extract uh, some kind of idea of what was done in the paper. So from what I can tell, I think these exams are really gauging a student's ability to listen in on and understand the conversations that happen in academic publications. As stressful as these exams were, I found them to be the most interesting and useful in terms of skills that I personally think should be tested in graduate school. There's plenty of more that I could say about these exams. For example, the full list of topics that I've seen while taking them, how some of us tried studying for the exams, and also uh, how my ability to do well on them has changed throughout my time taking them. But in the interest of keeping this video short, I'll just say that I think these cumulative exams are vastly more useful in gauging a student's capacity for graduate school um, than the qualifying exams or comprehensive exams that you see at a lot of other institutions. After satisfying the cumulative exam requirements, students must pass their qualifying exam, which is much less intimidating than it sounds. So the point of the qualifying exam is to determine if the um, advisor and secondary advisor think the student is ready to proceed through the graduate program. Um, and so the exam basically consists of a conversation between the student 
their primary advisor, and typically their secondary advisor. And the topics that are discussed during this conversation usually include uh, things like academic record, um, scientific and academic interests, ability, enthusiasm, research efforts, teaching efforts, uh, outreach efforts, performance on the cumulative exams, and so on. But I'm not really sure I would even call the qualifying exam an, an actual exam per se. It's more of something between an exam and a formality in the program because there is documentation that needs to be submitted to the graduate school for the exam. Um, but typically from what I've seen, your advisor is not going to let you set up a, a qualifying exam meeting unless they think that you're ready to do so. So after submitting the qualifying exam paperwork to the grad school, the student must then satisfy their oral exam requirements, which are broken down into two components. Uh, at least in my department, they're in two components. So each component is administered at a separate time. The first part of the oral exam is the coursework orals, and the purpose of the coursework orals, as quoted in the astronomy department's graduate student handbook, is to quiz the student to ascertain their knowledge of and familiarity with factual material, techniques, theory, and methods in astronomy. In my experience, it seemed like my coursework orals committee was mostly interested in seeing how I approach solving problems in astronomy, as well as making sure that I was able to recall certain concepts that are either related to my research directly or to general topics in astronomy that everyone in the program should be familiar with. Again, there is a lot that I could say about my coursework orals, like how I studied for it, what kind of questions I was asked, how I felt before, during, and after the exam, because this exam was a pretty big emotional roller coaster for me, but I'll have to leave all that for another time in another video. The second part of the oral exam is the uh, thesis proposal presentation. Um, but before a student is able to actually orally propose their thesis, they must first submit a written thesis proposal to their thesis committee. Um, and this written thesis proposal is basically just a document outlining the details of their proposed thesis project. So this document needs to be submitted roughly a week before your oral presentation to your thesis committee. And this is just to make sure that the thesis committee is familiar with your project before you present it to the rest of the department. Um, and also, for them to be able to provide you feedback in case they think it's important either for your project as a whole or just for your talk that's coming up. I was able to complete my oral thesis proposal component back at the beginning of November, which officially made me a PhD candidate at NMSU. Um, although I'm technically on the PhD track, at this point I also have the option to apply for my master's degree and receive that from the graduate school. Um, but my main goal now as a PhD candidate is to continue working on the uh, thesis project that I proposed for during my or oral exam. And so like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there were many steps that went into reaching this point of PhD candidacy. Um, I obviously didn't go into many details on any one step. So if there are steps that you'd like me to elaborate on or steps that you have questions about, definitely leave a comment below and thank you everyone for watching.